Passengers traveling abroad no longer have to present a negative COVID-19 test before re-entering the United States. For the last year, airline passengers had to obtain a negative COVID test within 24 hours of boarding. Under the new guidance, all travelers, U.S. citizens or not, can come in without testing negative. The CDC still maintains that the new policy could be reversed, but for now, travelers can say good riddance. What do you think of this? Is this a welcome change? Have no. you been traveling lately? I have. Yeah, I, I went home to the Bahamas in uh -huh. February and I had to do COVID tests in and out. Um, I actually think this is another continuation of, you know, dropping all the policies in place that protect us from COVID and then complaining and being shocked that we continue to deal with COVID. Um, I understand why people, that it's inconvenient. I understand that. I understand people are over, you know, testing, they're over masks and all these different things. But I just don't think uh, the inconvenience or even maybe like marginal costs outweigh the benefits of doing the test. But I know you probably disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I'm, I'm very curious about is there was an inconsistency inherent in the way that this was in force. For example, I did a land crossing between Tijuana and California merely a few months ago. Mm -hmm. For the land crossing from Mexico to the United States, I didn't have to present a negative test. Yeah. And yet flying two weeks ago you from did. Oaxaca to Texas, Mexico and the US, once again, I didn't yeah. have to present it. Um, and so I could understand the logic there, given that there are so many people, um, both Mexicans and Americans, who cross the, the land border frequently uh, for work to the yeah. point where it would be pretty unfeasible to test on a regular basis. But especially for, for tourists and for people who are just, just going back and forth, it doesn't make sense that this policy like was enforced in that manner. Uh, and then also just in terms of like controlling, like is, is the concept to control the amount of COVID that courses through the US? Because I mean, I have some bad news on that front. Or is the concept to ensure that people aren't on airplanes while yeah. testing? Uh, positive because if so, I mean, we ought to extend that policy for domestic flights, but we don't. So I don't There's disagree with you there. Here. I do not disagree with you. I think it's been very inconsistent. I think we've seen so many inconsistencies. It's even hard to have faith in the CDC and a lot of these people pushing COVID policies at this point. I don't disagree, yeah. but I don't think it means that we should level down. I think it probably means that we should level up. I think the reality is we're What not does that look like and what would the like, what would the ideal regiment be and with what goal in mind? I think if you're traveling, you need a test. I think if you're traveling yeah. in and out of place, especially at least, and I know I would feel about this as a Bahamian citizen, don't roll mm -hmm. up in my country, uh, <laughs> tested positive for COVID and spreading around my little island nation. So, mm -hmm. you know, on the flip side, I think uh, we probably should be doing more to minimize um, the spread and, and transaction of COVID. But I do agree with you that we are being so inconsistent that it's probably futile. And maybe yeah. I could see why you would feel, you know, this policy here isn't going to do a good job. Uh, it's not doing a good job of doing that since we're not doing it in so many other places. And I can understand that argument for why, but as yeah. an overall general, I think we should have more poli policies. You see, I'm very much of the mindset, and I, I, I this is actually a huge evolution in my beliefs because at the very beginning, I was very much like the sort of technocratic test trace isolate. The US needs to build out a really strong testing capacity. Um, perhaps the government should even distribute high quality masks to, to yeah. people. That way they're actually focused on mask quality. That's sort of how I, I thought about it in the beginning. And I've really, really changed my thinking, especially looking at how people actually operate in the wild, yeah. which is different than how I wish they would operate. Yes. Uh, and I'm just pretty resigned to the fact uh, that COVID is going to be endemic yeah. and that there's not that much we can do other than continue to develop um, antiviral treatments like Paxlovid uh, to continue to ensure that people have access to vaccination. Uh, and then to try to make sure that our hospital capacity doesn't get overrun because really people need access to care. But other than that, this is going to be a seasonally circulating thing akin to the flu. And I'm not happy about it because it's yet another thing that can yeah. disrupt our lives and disrupts older people and, and the, the sick and infirm to a greater degree than it, you know, disrupts the rest of our lives. But honestly, I agree with you. Point. I agree with you on a practical level. I honestly yeah. do. I get that, especially. And I have had some some laxing in my own views towards, yeah. you know, the COVID policies. I know um, maybe a few months ago, even on here, I was like, we're definitely getting another lockdown. We're going to da 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 da. And I was like, ooh, didn't age well. I don't think we're getting a lockdown. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't think we're getting that lockdown. I don't see, not because I don't think we should have, yeah. not because I don't think there's- Oh, you uh, would have been in favor of it. Yeah, I would have been in favor of, really? uh, favor of another lockdown. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, and maybe it's because uh, I know you live between- Don't lock yourself down. I, I don't want you First locked. of all, you know, I absolutely I mean, I would. I want you to be locked absolutely down. Absolutely would. I work in the public criminal court, so I absolutely <laughs> would take another lockdown. Um, so I, I, I don't disagree. I think at a practical level, um, you're right. But I do think if we continue laxing, right? We just continue yeah. dropping, dropping, dropping policies and we keep seeing the numbers skyrocket, especially in a place like New York well, but City. But they don't skyrocket. I mean, they're, they're but in New York, and they're cyclical in a way that doesn't perfectly correspond. That doesn't even 
correspond well to yeah. the lockdowns and to the pandemic suppression measures that we are taking on. Maybe in some places, but I know uh, in New York, we have seen with every, you know, when Eric Adams first dropped the mask mandate, we saw our numbers quadruple, you know, we've seen- But we didn't see death toll correspond. We, we've seen deaths, though. We're seeing we're we, still we, seeing we a lot of deaths. We we're still seeing some, a lot of hospital but we, cases. But we didn't see the death toll that we would have. If, like They're not well correlated. That's sort of the inconvenient truth of all of this. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree, but I do I do get where you're coming from. I do think at the, at the end of the day, you know, it's easy to look at something on a larger level when it's not impacting you, right? When you're not the mm -hmm. person sick with COVID, when you're not the person who's lost family, when you're, you know, yeah. it's easy to be like- I mean, I, I just want to be clear, like I have- a No, 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 I'm not even yeah, talking about you. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. saying as a general. Yeah, totally. I think, you know, it's easy for us to, you know, think, all right, we're going to be stuck with it. You know, these policies yeah. aren't making too much sense. You see people are still going out. They're not, you know, they're wearing their mask, you know, coming into the restaurant, but once they sit down, they take it off. And I do think there are inconsistent, silly policies, but I do think overall that larger reflection of us, you know, deciding we want to move away from it and not take it seriously and drop these policies um, isn't good for us in the long term. But you know, what do I know? What do I know? I'm not a scientist, but- I think that's a good point. Yeah. What you're saying is that there's like, there's been a squandering of, of trust in our public health institutions and that that does lead to them being sort of feckless and, and ineffective going yeah. forward. And so what happens if we do have a strain that emerges that's, you know, twice as infectious or, you know, five times as severe, there will be this challenge of like, we don't know, we don't have uh, tools in our toolkit to ensure compliance. Right. And so the thing that we've sort of, that's been demonstrated through and through is that people are not particularly uh, compliant and that they're not particularly uh, married to sensible policies. They're not very consistent in their behavior. Yeah. But what happens, you know, now that we know that, what happens if there's a much more serious threat presented to us? I think that's a fair point. Yes. You're like, yes. you're right. Yeah. Okay. But at, the same right time, but at the same time, like I, with this specific thing, I mean, this this is going to be endemic. This is going to be something that we're dealing with for forever, probably. Uh, and the thing that will the yeah. thing that will change though is that we will have hopefully vaccines that will be um, strain specific, yeah. which will be wonderful. Um, and we're, we're also getting more and more uh, treatments for people who haven't gotten vaccinated, which right. as much as I think so many people want to do the political point scoring and, you know, ridicule them. Yeah. The fact of the matter is we don't want them to die. Like that would be really, really good if they didn't die, even if they made stupid choices like, you know, and so, <laughs> and so ensuring that we have more and more medical technology that's there to to render aid to them and to treat them is a really, really good thing. And that's, that's something fair. we're seeing a lot of. And the FDA's actually been moving a little bit faster on that. That's like, fair. That's fair. I think I think honestly, I think on a larger point, we definitely agree, right? I think yeah. I think I think people have rightfully lost a lot of trust, like I said, in the government and the CDC with this flip flop of policies. Um, and the FDA too, which really dragged its feet on a lot of the emergency use authorization. hundred percent. A hundred percent. So <laughs> Coming up, 31 accused white nationalists were arrested and charged with conspiracy to riot. We discuss their alleged plot with an advisor at the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce next.